Okay, so we've gone through the patho, the pathology of the disease. We've gone through some of the things that owners may present the animals for. We've gone through some of the things that you may find on your physical examination. So let's talk about what we're going to do if we're suspicious an animal has or cat has hyperthyroid thyroidism. So what are some of the things that you can see on your routine blood work that you can that would make you think the animal is hyperthyroid or if the abnormalities are there you can blame it on hyperthyroidism so you don't have to look for something else. So on your complete blood count we might see a mild elevation in your PCB. We talked about thyroid hormone causing um, erythropoiesis and so we may see an erythrocytosis. They also may be a bit dehydrated. You might see an increased MCV, again for the same reason that you have an increase in erythrocytosis. You may see a stress leukogram and you may also see increased platelet size. On your serum chemistry, many of these cats have a mild to severe elevation in liver enzymes and the ALT is particularly targeted. This can be quite high, um, but in the absence of other signs of um, liver disease, like if the bilirubin is normal and there's no other real signs of, of liver disease, you can blame that on hyperthyroidism. They may be hyperglycemic, especially if they're borderline diabetic. Uh, the excess thyroid hormone is going to fight with insulin for glucose control, and so they may be hyperglycemic. Their BUN and creatinine may be elevated, and they may have concurrent renal disease, or they may be, it may be pre-renal because they're dehydrated. They may have mild hyperphosphatemia, mild hypokalemia, and because thyroid hormones cause such severe muscle breakdown, they may have a CPK elevation that could be quite high. Urine analysis, we usually don't see a whole lot except that they're usually hyposthenuric because they're polyuric or polydipsic or they may have concurrent renal disease. We image a lot of these guys because we're worried about the heart murmurs that they present with. And some of the things that you might see are a mild to severe cardiomegaly, especially if they have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. You may see pleural effusion or pulmonary edema if they're in heart failure. We also like to image these animals to look at the evaluation of their kidneys to help us evaluate what their, their renal function is, and we like to look at liver size, and that helps us interpret um, elevated liver enzymes if we have them. You always want to check a blood pressure on these guys. These guys can be um, hypertensive. It's something that you want to address. Uh, it is very difficult sometimes to get a blood pressure on a cat in the exam room. Therefore, please get good at look, doing fundic exams in cats. And one of the things that you can see if they've had long-standing hypertension is that their retinal vessels will be dilated. So that's something that can help you determine if the animal is really hypertensive or if it's actually just an effect of them being in the hospital. Okay, so we've talked now about um, some of the peripheral blood work that we've done and what some of the abnormalities may be in a hyperthyroid cat. Now let's talk about some of the diagnostics that we're going to do to confirm hyperthyroid disease. Shockingly, basal T4 concentration is incredibly helpful to diagnose hyperthyroid disease. And as an endocrinologist, I almost always say you should never look for an endocrine disease without appropriate clinical signs. However, the exception to that is hyperthyroidism. If you get an elevated T4 level on a routine blood exam in a geriatric cat, um, you can pretty much diagnose hyperthyroidism because you don't have a lot of differentials for an elevated T4 in a cat. It's either going to be hyperthyroid or you're going to have laboratory error. Most cats, um, greater than 90% of them, have an elevated T4 level if they're hyperthyroid. But from this graph that um, we're showing here, it can actually go into the normal range if they're hyperthyroid periodically. So if you are suspicious an animal is hyperthyroid and the T4 is not normal, is, is in the normal range, 
you can repeat it in a couple of weeks. And remember, if they have another disease process, that can cause your total T4 to be decreased and then may mask hyperthyroidism in that cat. But for the most part, a basal T4 level is going to get the disease for you. If it doesn't, or if you have any questions, then another thing that you can do is you can measure the free T4 concentration compared to the total T4 concentration. We measure free T4 by equilibrium dialysis, and that's something that you can request from an endocrine laboratory. And basically what you're doing here is removing interference by the thyroid hormone binding protein. So you're getting rid of a lot of the interference by non-thyroidal illness. Unfortunately, we can't use free T4 on its own because 12 to 15 percent of euthyroid cats that have another disease process going on in their body had an elevated free T4. So we use it in combination with a total T4. You should run these together on the same serum sample. And what a lot of people do is they'll run the T4 and it may be equivocal and they're like, you know what, I really need another test to determine if this animal is hyperthyroid or not. And you can call up the lab and they can run a free T4 on the same serum sample, but you want to make sure that you run it on the same serum sample.